is the city of Detroit. Where this teeming industrial metropolis now stands, there was some 200 years back, a small guarded fort protecting a handful of white settlers. Fort Detroit was surrounded by many Indian tribes. The most prominent of these was the Ottawas, a proud people who in the period from 1753 to 1769 was ruled over by Chief Pontiac. Pontiac was a great warrior, a man of faith, who believed the Indian and white man could live together. The English who controlled this territory hired professional German soldiers known as Hessians to help patrol the area. One of the Hessian officers, a Colonel von Weber, did not share Pontiac's point of view. He was ambitious, ruthless, and greedy for power. Sir, the attack did come as a complete surprise. These Indians are fools and stupid. What about the prisoners, sir? There are to be no prisoners. These are dangerous animals. But what about the women and children, sir? I said no prisoners. I meant no prisoners. Relay that as an order. Yes, sir. And set the village on fire! <laughs> Dangerous times. There is blood upon our land. I have hoped for peace. I have prayed for peace. I have even signed treaties that say we can live in peace. Their treaties are words that lie. When a white man wants more land, they break their treaties. We want war. Yes, but some of the white people are our friends. The French are our friends. The Redcoats are enemies. They have killed our women and children, and we want war. The Great Spirit has shown me what is to come. Now that the moon is thin and new, return to your villages. Prepare well. For when the moon is full, rise and strike. <laughs> Ah, Colonel von Faber, your tactics are proving most successful. After replenishing supplies, you will advance by Lake and River to Fort Detroit. Very good, sir. Once we have eliminated all the natives in that territory, you will have control of the entire Great Lakes region. A most difficult mission, von Weber, but we have the utmost confidence in you. Thank you, sir. Hey, Lieutenant Kent McIntyre to see you, sir. The Ranger? Yes, sir. Says it's a matter of greatest importance. Send him in. Pray excuse us. Weren't you ordered a buffalo? Yes, sir, but I encountered a most serious situation. Yes? May I speak frankly, sir? By all means, come to the point. Well, sir, the point is, 
Someone must order this Colonel von Weber to stop his butchery. Colonel has had your report at first hand. Colonel von Weber, Lieutenant Kent McIntyre. You are satisfied with my results, sir? Most satisfied. However, these rangers have lived among the Indians for years, and uh, we regard them highly. I, too, understand the value of these rangers. But with your permission, sir, I shall continue to use my abominable tactics at my own discretion. By all means, pray be seated. Thank you, sir. Now, uh, at Fort Detroit, am I to place my troops under Major Gladwin's command? Well, that's customary. If the garrison's established, you're the reinforcements. Yes, sir, but there's a question of rank. Uh, Gladwin's in mind. Oh, sure, you and Gladwin will hit it off. Naturally, in a crisis, you as a superior would assume command. Sir, Major Gladwin is respected by the Indians. You shall see, McIntyre. After another skirmish or two, there will be plenty of respect for Van Weber. Respect, Colonel? Never. You're already hated. The methods are regarded with contempt. Do you presume to criticize my methods? Yes, sir. War is war. But there have always been some rules that have been respected by both sides. Enough, gentlemen. Our goal is clearly defined. How we attain it is unimportant. I came back here to warn you, sir, that thanks to this Colonel Von Weber, the woods are full of angry whispers. Chief Pontiac believes in an eye for an eye. This means our women and children will not be spared. Pontiac is the devil in war paint, sir. A treacherous beast with the brains of a fox and the fangs of a wolf. Chief Pontiac is honest and generous with those he trusts. He believes this country is big enough for Indians and whites to live side by side in peace. So do I. Sentiment such as yours is naive, Mr. Mackin. However, as you have an excellent reputation, I have an assignment worthy of you. You're aware I have previous orders, sir? They are countermanded. Now, you will proceed as soon as possible to Fort Detroit. You will deliver certain dispatches to Major Gladwin and inform him that reinforcements are on the way. If attacked, he is to hold the fort at all costs. Very yes. good. Chunkaka? Mia Wata. Mia Chunkaka?
Can't you understand? We must have water. Manique Hupo. Do you want to starve us? We must have food. Can't you leave us alone for a while? There's no place where we can run. Set you poor out. I know of. I saw them kill my father. Can you rescue us? I'm alone. Do you have a gun? They have many guns. Coward. Are you married? Do you think I'm in the mood for a proposal? I'm not proposing. I'm only trying to help. Here, take this. Why? It needs respect marriage. What's your name? Winifred Lancaster. Related to Sir John? My father. Yeah. 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 Stay away. Stay away. Come. Eat now. Drop gun. I am a friend of Ottawa people. Pontiac. White dog lies. There is proof. Take me to Pontiac. You my prisoner. Go. Right now. Chief Pontiac, my brother. Great chief, we bring pale face. Not French, wear otter sign on wampum belts. Welcome, my white brother. Do you come to speak or to listen? I have words for Chief Pontiac alone. 
This, my brother, is as my son. I have not heard his voice in council for many moons. We will speak alone. Great chief, I do not trust this white man. You come from the fort? I have come on a long journey from the east. Do you bring word of war or peace? Come to counsel peace. My white brother has never spoken with a double tongue. I will listen. The war hatchet is buried between us. My brother answer a question with the truth. Chief Pontiac lies only to his enemies, not to his friends. Do you expect help from the French in this war? They have promised help, but it has not come. It will never come, my brother. French and the English are at peace. At peace? They've signed treaties and sworn brotherhood. I have seen these treaties. This is grave news, my brother. I have still graver news. Many soldiers are coming by ship to reinforce the garrison at Fort Detroit. This ship is strong. The war canoes could do nothing against it. We do not fear the Redcoats. My braves have held Fort Detroit under siege for one full moon past. Nevertheless, my brother, it would be wise to consider. Their numbers are endless as the sands of the great water. If these armies fail, others and still greater ones will follow. Yes, they will come. My brother once said that the Indian and the white man can live side by side. That is my hope. But the white man must show that he has peace in his heart. He must prove this to us. Until then, there will be war. Friend Pontiac, may I tell Major Gladwin that you will talk terms with him? He is a man with peace in his heart. My brother, go to the fort. Speak with your great white chief, Major Gladwin. If it is right, I will come there with my war chiefs to make a treaty. And the evil birds will fly no more. And peace will come to this land. Until then, my braves will hold siege on the fort, but will not attack again unless this peace talk fails. That is the agreement that I will make. <coughs> A white captive held as hostage. Sounds like she's being mistreated. She is being courted by one of the braves. <coughs> And she is in trouble. The Braves obey my laws when they're in my village. She will become his squaw only if she agrees. May I see this woman? Chia. Bring white woman. Woman be here soon. Whoa! Hot Bill! Big Indian chief. Hawk Bill killed many white men. Oh! Hawk Bill, many scalp. <laughs> Hawk Bill killed many, many white men. Bill, a good husband for a white squaw. You come with me now. I'll see you all hang for this. My woman. White man lies. Me want woman. Take. My white brother does not speak with a double tongue. Here is proof. She wears the matching circle to my ring. My white brother does not lie. By the word of Pontiac, this is your woman. So long as she remains with the Indian people. 
your footsteps will follow in his trail. And may the fires of devotion burn bright in your heart for this, my white brother. May evil follow you. Hawkbill, go in peace. This woman has been returned to her own man. She will live with us as one of my family. Squaw, follow me. Head down. What? You told two paces behind, quick. Squaw, make fire. Cook food. I will not. You told quickly. Get away. Use Chia's teepee for bride's tent. Bride? Would you rather have Hawkbill? <laughs> when we get back to civilization, I'll repay you for this. You ought to stay mad all the time. Very becoming. I ought to throw this in the face. Go ahead. Only if the squaw happens to see you, I have to beat you. It's an old Indian custom. You wouldn't dare. I'd have to. Otherwise, they'd call me squaw man. I'm no squaw man. Sooner or later, I'll have you court-martialed and shot. Not eat yet? Squaw can cook, but slow. Need more furs for marriage bed? No, thanks, Chia. Nice soft bed. Nice soft squaw. See you in the day, you day, you just. Well, little bride, I'm sleepy. I'm glad. I'll feel better in the morning. You're not sleeping in here. We'll talk about it at breakfast, huh? You're not sleeping in here. Be a good little bride and do as you're told. I am not your bride and I don't take orders. You're my bride as long as you're in Indian territory. And you learn to take orders. Well, not from you. Well, from somebody else then. I'm leaving. Leaving? Why? I'm going to Fort Detroit. Please take me with you. I can't. You're still Pontiac's hostage. He can exchange you for some Indian braves. You mean I have to stay here alone? You won't be alone, and you'll be safe. But I want to go, even if it is with you. Well, thanks, but you're staying. Oh, you're horrible. You're right. Chia? Take care of her while I'm gone. Chia, take care. She like you better when you come back. If it's a rod Indian, it's my shot. That's a white man, a scout. Open the gate. Where's the regular? Where are you from? Any word of the ranger? Where's the regular? When's the disease coming? Ranger McIntyre reporting to Major Flat. Glad you got through. However, did you do it? We're under siege here. All quiet for the moment, isn't it? Thanks to me and my brother Pontiac. Brother? This way, sir. Major, how are you? Well, McIntyre, how nice to see you. General Amherst asked me to tell you that reinforcements are on the way. Oh, at last. And the command of Colonel Von Weber. Von Weber? Oh, no. Now you know him, sir. Unfortunately, yes. I understand. Mercenaries who fight for money instead of principle. Well, that's more than that. Von Weber... Ever since he was captured and tortured by the Arapahoes, he's been like a madman. 
This personal vengeance has shamed the army. However, uh, did you have much trouble getting here? No, sir, thanks to my friend Pontiac. You're a friend of Pontiac's? Practically a member of his family, sir. He calls me his little white brother. Now he's willing to come to the fort to discuss terms for peace. Do you mean to say that Pontiac... It's all very unofficial, sir. I hadn't the authority. I hope you won't give me away. Give you away, my dear McIntyre? Well, if there's any question, I'll say that I authorized you. Then you'll talk with him. Talk with him? I'll roll out the red carpet. But are you sure that this isn't a trick? Remember, he's a wily old fox. Sure he is. He'll lie and cheat and fox an enemy. But he'll be honest with me, sir. Because I'm his friend. You can count on that. Oh, what a stroke of providence. My garrison besieged, almost out of rations, ten men down with smallpox. Smallpox? Yes, we had a minor plague, 16 dead. But the doctor feels that he has it under control now. The news you bring more than offsets what we've been through. Do you know, McIntyre, we can make history here in the next few days if we can just find the right formula for peace. Do you know what it is? No, sir, I wish I did. So do I. No, this is the time for men to get down upon their knees and pray for guidance. Pontiac is praying for guidance, too, sir. I guess it's all up to the great spirit now. house good. I had a bath. Bath? Bath. Lake. Water. Me clean. Sweat house good for new school. Make ready for marriage night. White chief say take care, little white squaw. I take. Oh, Mr. McIntyre ordered this, did he? In England, they treat lobsters like this. Lobsters? Oh, of course, you wouldn't know what a lobster is. Lobster is a, a fish. Y you eat. Fish. I eat. Oh! <laughs> Here are you. White skin. I think big magic. That's it. Mr. McIntyre must think red skin is big magic, too. Over. White chief see new squall. Six. Happy. Do you have a mirror? Mirror? A mirror. Look. See self in water. White chief not come back. Why? Old squaw him maybe forget. New squaw him never forget. You pretty. <laughs> Thank you, Lightfoot. You pretty, pretty, pretty. <laughs> I like you too. Go, squaw man, go. Yeah, yeah. Where every day. Where marriage night. Heap magic. I like your magic. Big magic. Many papoose. Six, nine, ten. Is this your idea or Mr. McIntyre's? <laughs> there are only few men in Fort. We kill some. Soon others starve. We want war. Oh, Inela. Inela. A great ship is coming with food and many soldiers. The French leaders say their great white father will send an army to help Indian tribe. This is a lie. The French canoes are gone from the lakes. Their army has sailed across the great waters. My white brother has read their treaties. Maybe white brother lie. My white brother does not lie. The white chief at the fort. Peace. Inila! Inila! Then Major Gladwin will talk with me. He will talk. This is good. Maybe this is trick. Maybe white man is spy. Don't try so hard, Hawkbill. 
If we go to fort, they take us prisoners and put us in jail. White chief at the fort is a fine man. He does not want war. He wants to live in peace. As brothers. That is the way men should do. We will go to the fort. If your white chief has peace in his heart, I will know. And then we will end war. Maybe peace with Big White Chief, but no peace with you and me. You can have many squaws, Hawkbill. Saw a white squaw first. With you and me, always war. All right, then, if you want it that way. May the bridegroom come in? You come. You're lovely. She little white swan, all ready for marriage night. Thanks, Chief. For your information and pleasure, I have been steamed. Well, I wish I'd been around to watch. The day I find you in an English fort, I'll see to it the steaming's returned to lobster color. Believe me, I will watch. Out, Chief. The bride and groom are about to quarrel. Chief, please stay. Out. I go. I stay. You squaw men for sure. E. I. Isn't the little white swan glad to see me back? The other prisoners have been exchanged. I know. I helped arrange for that. Why wasn't I? For our honeymoon? She says a messenger has just arrived from the Braves around the fort. Let's see what he has to say. Squaw, stay behind. The schooner has arrived from the fort. Reinforcements. Oh, the army. That's wonderful. I'm not so sure. Good old English regulars, bless them. They're not English regulars. They're Hessians. They couldn't have come at a worse time. You must get right to the fort and tell them how many Indians are here and whether we... Ruin everything we've tried to do? Which side are you on, anyway? I'm for peace. Peace? You turncoat renegade. Can't you get this through your head? If the peace plans work... You can walk out of here, and I don't care where you go. And if they don't, and this village is attacked, all white prisoners will be killed. This includes you. It's reinforcements! Congratulations for holding on, Major. Well, we were scraping the bottom of the barrel for supplies, sir. The schooner's loaded above the plimsoll. Dry rations and, of course, barreled meat and plenty of ammunition. Well, there may not be any more fighting. I've arranged to discuss a peace treaty with Pontiac. Treaty, sir? Yes. They haven't fired a shot at us in days. The Indians have held us to a siege. You will please to read the orders, Major. One does not treat with wild beasts. One destroys them. Now, 
Amherst instructs me to turn over my command to you, sir. This is most unusual. Not in view of my rank, sir. I've got a troop of men afoot, an armed crew aboard the schooner, and I intend to use them. Well, respecting your rank, sir, the leader of the Indians, Chief Pontiac, has been led to expect a peace conference here. Oh? And how does one confer with a savage? To his people, Pontiac is a great general, sir. He is, in fact, a brilliant strategist, a man of stature and great dignity. But more important, he is the spiritual and religious leader of many tribes, sir. Oh, a red-skinned messiah. Oh, Gladwin, my man. This siege has softened you. I'll show you how to deal with wild pigs. I'm sorry you feel that way about it, sir. For your information, Major, as soon as my men are rested, whether your peace conference has matured or not, I am moving against the enemy. Well, I'd suggest we consolidate and hold the fort. We are surrounded by 2,000 picked braves, sir. You didn't see them attack my schooner and cannon when I came in, did you? I explained there was a truce. In open combat, 100 of my soldiers are the equal of a thousand sneaking Indian swine who can't stand up against a bayonet. This is not open country, sir. This is a forest. You will not see them, but they will be all around you. You'll never have a chance to use a bayonet. Are you disputing my authority, Major? No, sir, but I should like to inform you that the responsibility will be all yours. Quite. If you obstruct me in any way, I shall be forced to place you under arrest. Now, I should like to inspect the rest of the fort. Doctor. Doctor, what is the situation? Well, sir, we're in luck. No new cases in the past four days. That's good. Uh, how are the sick ones getting along? Getting better. Slowly, of course, slowly. I'm a great believer in heat to destroy the smallpox pest. Mm. Yes, of course. Of course. Naturally, we boil everything. Clothing, blankets... Everything. Yes, sir. Yes, Doctor. Uh, be so kind. Uh, follow me to Major Gladwin's office. Doctor, about these uh, contaminated blankets and clothing, Are these articles would uh, spread the disease, no? Certainly, sir. The pox is highly contagious. That's why we boil everything. Major Gladwin. How would you like to send some gifts to the Indians? Gift, sir? Yes, as a token of my uh, friendship. Well, it's an excellent idea. No better way to obtain an Indian's friendship than with gifts, sir. I wish to send the blankets and clothing to Chief Pontiac's village. Why, it'll poison them like flies, sir. More potent than gunpowder, don't you think? In all humanity, sir. By humanity, you refer, of course, to my soldiers. It is my duty to protect their lives. I refuse to be a party to it, sir. You will do as you are told. Insubordination in the face of the enemy is a capital offense. You understand that. You have your orders. You respect my rank. The offense is rank. It offends my soul. Compliments of Colonel Von Weber, sir. Round about. Ho! Tokens of the white man's hope for peace. Von Weber? How many sons do your chiefs assemble at the fort? Six.
gentlemen. Colonel Von Weber, Major Gladwin, Chief Pontiac. It is an honor to have you here, sir. I came here to speak for my people and give their thanks for your generous gifts. But greater are their thanks for the high purpose of this peace meeting. So the savage has come to beg for peace. Chief Pontiac did not come to beg for peace, sir. He expected to be received as the head of an army. To state his terms and ask for ours. Ridiculous, is it not? This creature comes here to state his terms and to ask ours. Is that not ridiculous? You're insulting us, sir. You're making a very grave mistake. Major, it is my experience that an Indian does not understand the meaning of a treaty. I allowed you to come here out of courtesy to my junior officer, Major Gladwin, and out of curiosity. Now, my curiosity is satisfied. I see no reason to continue this interview any further. Come back here! They came under a flag of truth. Colonel Von Weber, this is a matter of honor. Chief Pontiac came here as an ambassador of his people. Are you instructing me on a point of honor, Major? Yes, and on a matter of international law. I warn you, sir, General Amherst will have a complete report, and he will not approve of your actions. Very well. Let them go. My action was intended, or less. A warning? You destroyed everything we tried to do, and started a war which I doubt any of us will survive. We have already doomed Pontiac to defeat without placing one white life in jeopardy. What is the incubation period of the smallpox? Nine or ten days? Yes. He has had those blankets now seven days. We should attack Pontiac's village in full force. Four days from now. Are the compliments of Colonel Von Weber. You monster. I find you intolerably insulting. Arrest this man. You are exceeding your authority, sir. Lieutenant McIntyre is a free ranger and is not technically under your command. Every man in this fort is under my command, Major Gladwin, including you. Take this man to the guardhouse! All right, McIntyre. Count your mercies, my old mother used to say. When you're in trouble, Count your mercies. I'll count them if you tell me what they are. Well, now, it's a merciful death is what a firing squad offers you. A nice, clean death. Not messy-like. So it is. Would you rather have an Indian's tummy off splashing your brains about? Why not? Well, now, that's important, that is. A man should be all present in a county for to make a proper funeral. When I'm buried, I intend to have my scalp on my head. If an Indian ever draws his scalping knife on me, I just says to him, Oh, no, brother, look, soldier. Then I hand him his scalp, like this. He thinks it's magic, see? And it's painted red inside to look like blood. I'll bet you a month's pay he lets me off. Well, you're a smart fellow, all right, Limey. When the time comes, I aim to be a proper corpse, I do. Thanks for brightening my last hours, Limey. That's all right, mate. Thank you.
nothing about Anne. And I talked him into this. I did. A nice dream death, I said. <laughs> Me prisoner's gone. Help! 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 There he goes. There he goes. Sergeant, what is it? The prisoner, sir. Oh, uh. There he goes. Are you sure it's the prisoner? Yes, sir. Well, it seems to have escaped. Why, it's unbelievable. And do, of course, notify the guard, will you? Yes, sir. White dog, we finished private war. Now, forget it, Hawk Bill. I have to get to the village. <laughs> Me want white squaw. Man who lives takes. is not good. There is a great sickness upon my people.
white man's disease. Blood and pestilence. Straight from the isolation wards. What? Believe me, my brother, I did not know this. And this is not Major Gladwin's doing, I swear it. It's that von Weber. He was gonna have me shot. I had to break out of jail. So that is why you came here? Yes. Go. Go now. For when the Braves find out about this, even I may not be able to save you. But I want to stay here. Keep the disease from spreading to the other village. Go! I fear for you and your little white squaw. Pontiac says we'd better get out of here quickly. What's the matter? Chia. Lied to it. How did it happen? On Weber. Oh, I'm so ashamed of my people. Now, pay attention. I'm going to draw you a map. How to get to the fort. If you follow it carefully, you may be able to get there alone. What are you going to do? Stay here and fight the pest. It's too late. No, it isn't. If all the blankets and clothing are boiled and burned, the disease can't spread. The Indians would never do that. They wouldn't understand. They'd just die. I'm going to stay, too. This may be your only chance to get away. I'll stay. Not as tired as you. I'm afraid those braves are blaming us for all this. Yes, I know. I've, I've seen them watching us. Frighten me. Little bride, I think we'd better get out of here. Very much farther. You can rest a while. If we do get back to the fort, what will you do? Well, the way I feel right now, I'd, I'd like to join Pontiac and fight Von Weber. I don't blame you, but can't I? What is it, Brian? I hate the thought of you in danger. I don't want anything to happen to you. I don't want you hurt or, or court-martialed. Steam like a lobster. You must be in good standing with the great spirit. Not me, you. I will never settle that. Great spirit has spoken. It is war.
Later. That's how we shall meet them. Indians never could stand cold steel. Your tactic, sir. It's useless for me to protest. Quiet. We will attack in formation, destroy the enemy, and march back in formation. I can only hope some of you will get back, sir. We'll need you. We will, I assure you. Till then, you are in command of the fort. Very good, sir. Are you sure you'll be safe? For a while, anyway. On Weber gone, Gladwin will be in command. Prisoner. Her. McIntyre, what are you doing here? And I brought you back my squaw, sir. Squaw? I'm Winifred Lancaster. Sir John's daughter? Oh. Well, how did you get through? Well, it was as the saying goes, sir. Nip and tuck. We saw Von Weber march out on parade. So I thought I'd pay you a visit while he's gone. He isn't on parade. He's out to burn Indian villages. To destroy the enemy. He thinks he's going to catch them all asleep. He must be out of his mind, sir. He expects to meet them in formation and with cold steel. Thanks to those infected blankets, every tribe within a hundred miles of here is on the warpath. Well, he doesn't know that. He's counting on catching them all unprepared. Suicide, sir. Well, he must be warned, Lieutenant. Is that an order, sir? Oh, you can't make him go. Surely Von Weber deserves whatever happens to him. Yes, he does. But my concern is for the rank and file. The men, their wives. What trail did he take, sir? Through the French village and across the bridge. Well, little squaw, use your influence with the great spirit. Take care of us, sir. All woods from here? Yes, sir. How far is the village? About half a mile, sir. Good. From here, I go on foot. Olé. At the port?
Guaraíra. They'll be back at us in a minute. That's right, sir. Fight! There's no fight. Your action is a madness. The Indians are 20 to your one. Disperse the men and retreat now. We will not retreat! Disperse, men, and look out for yourselves. Come back here! Come back! That man is fun, Weber. I want him alive. On your feet, man! You're alive! Fight! Come on! Get down! Get down! Oh. <laughs> McIntyre. He tried to save us, ma'am. Warn Von Weber. Von Weber shot him. The Indians took him with them, too. Alive? I don't know. Indian torture before. White man's torture. Sheena. No. 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 No.
Lieutenant. Have four horses saddled immediately. Also arrange a color guard and a white flag. Yes, sir. Come on, my dear. We're going for a ride. Thank you, sir, for honoring our flag of truce. There is no longer any reason why we can't make peace. So I've come to discuss a treaty, sir, on your own terms. Treaties are made with the lips and the sign. But peace comes only through our hearts. I agree with you, sir. The Great Spirit has spoken to my heart. Yes, the Redcoats will remain here for a time. But men like you who pour across the sea. The Great Spirit has shown me that these people will come in peace. The forest will be their home. And my people will no longer be. The Indian will disappear from this. His beloved land. Chinook. 